Hello guys, we are back with our next tutorial. In this tutorial, let's go through Xenar breakdown and Avalanche breakdown. Guys, these two topics are really easy and important guys. So now in this tutorial, let's go through Xenar breakdown and Avalanche breakdown. So basically both of these, both of these, even Xenar and Avalanche, both mainly occur in reverse bias only guys. That's a star point to be noted. So, if you want to draw, draw the diagram for these two things, just draw a P and I out and give it a negative bias. That's it. There is nothing much to do more than that, guys. Okay. So, basically, let us go through, excuse me, what basically happens in Xena breakdown. So, basically, I told you that we'll be giving a negative supply. So, if we rapidly increase the supply voltage okay if we give a large amount of supply voltage or we're gonna increase it rapidly so this voltage is going to break the covalent bonds in between the elements so as we all know that let us assume this as our germanium atom so in this i hope everyone knows that in one of my tutorial, I have just drawn you the p-type and n-type. In that, I have just discussed this. So basically, here there will be electrons, guys. So this is the complete germanium. So if we give a large amount of reverse bias, these all bonds are going to break and all the electrons will be outside. So from now on, that p-n diode is of no use, guys. It cannot be used in any manner. So now I hope everyone got a small idea on Xena breakdown. Okay guys, right? Okay. So now let us go through avalanche breakdown. Guys, this is also similar to that. But here it happens in steps. So basically avalanche breakdown is also called as carrier multiplier. It's something like its nickname guys. So we'll be going through it. Why did that nickname came? Don't worry. So basically when a p-n junction diode is connected in a reverse bias that is nothing but p to negative and n to positive. So we know that in reverse bias a small amount of reverse saturation current is generated. Yeah guys I hope everyone knows that that's really a simple and small point. So basically as the magnitude of the reverse voltage increases the kinetic energy of free electron also increases. The free electron hit the atom at high speed then generates the new electron hole pair. So this process continues and continues and continues. They break more and more covalent bonds. So here it's it happening like a multiplying process, right? So that's the reason why the name carrier multiplier has came. So now the process further continues at the same point depletion region depletion sorry depletion region vanishes at some point the depletion layer will vanish so as a result a huge amount of reverse bias starts flowing through the pn diode so if the current is not stopped guys if you just let it go the diode is going to get damaged and it may even burn off so if the current is not stopped by an external means like resistor, yeah, I hope everyone knows that to control the current we will be using the resistors. Okay, so the junction breaks by this breakdown. This breakdown is called as avalanche breakdown. So now let us go through some kind of representation to remember all this stuff guys. I'm going to just give you a small hint like things so that you can remember this. So basically uh, everyone knows that avalanche breakdown happens in reverse bias. So as reverse voltage increases, the free electron, that is nothing but let us assume free electron, Fe. Free, free electrons kinetic energy, okay, kinetic energy will also increase. So now this one free electron will go and hit a covalent bond between two elements, guys. So this will hit that. So it is, this one is giving... 2 and 3 so let us assume this is the second electron third electron so this first electron is hitting this and giving 2 similarly this 2 hits one more covalent bond and gives 2 like that this chain 
continues really really far guys so that's the reason why we call this as cario multiplier so now i hope everyone got a hundred percent clear idea and difference between avalanche and xena so if there is any more further confusion here is one more hint for you guys so basically avalanche the first letter is a and xena the first letter is z so basically in a we will be learning step by step and once we reach z we learnt many things in between each and every letter we have learnt about them so now learning about z is really easy so in one step all the damage happens that is nothing but due to a huge current at that second it's going to damage all the covalent bonds so while learning a we gonna do it step by step as that's the first alphabet we need to learn it what's that everything like that so we'll be following some steps so one two four say four like two power n guys so in the first step n equal to zero to infinity so it continues like one two 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 to four two to eight sorry four to eight eight to sixteen eight to thirty two like that it moves on so here I hope now everyone is hundred percent clear with these two topics. In the next tutorial, we'll be going through some more basic definitions of p-n junction diode, guys. Thank you. Thanks for watching.